The next item of business is a matter of the day. Mr Jim Allister has given notice to make a statement on the failure to deliver a pension for victims of the Troubles, which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak on this subject. I would remind members that during this period I cannot take any points of order on this or any other matter until the item of business has been disposed. I call Mr Jim Allister. Thank you. Um, I am grateful, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, for the opportunity to raise this issue. In the week when the leader of Sinn Féin told the innocent victims of the IRA that the actions of the organisation that made them victims were justified. All victims received the kick in the teeth that the pension that they had been long promised was not to be delivered as promised. That is an appalling failure of government to think that those who lost the most in the horrendous troubles are simply cast aside and told what you were promised by government is not now at this point to be delivered. That is truly shocking. And the reason for that is equally shocking, that it appears, we are told, there is not agreement on the funding of that vital pension. I simply have this observation. Why was the opportunity of the new decade, new approach negotiations, why was the leverage of that opportunity squandered not to put that issue to bed, not to get the assurance that there would be the funding wherever it was coming from. That was the time to deliver. And the victims were let down in those negotiations. And now we are in the woeful situation that if this executive is to negotiate with the exchequer on the funding of this pension, the man who will go to negotiate, the finance minister, is a past member of the very organisation that made so many of these victims. And a man who cannot even do his duty to the Quinn family will now, it seems, be asked to take forward proceedings with the Exchequer. What hope in that? And I do have to say to the First Minister, Mrs Foster, what is the point in being First Minister, if you cannot even deliver for this most demanding of situations, if you cannot deliver to the innocent victims of terrorism, what's the point in being First Minister? Of course, we're told it's about finance. I wonder. I suspect there's a party in this executive dragging their feet on this issue because they do not accept that it should be for only those who were innocent and didn't cause their own harm. Is that the real reason why there has been delay and failure to take this forward and failure to designate an apartment? I suspect it is, but one thing is clear. The innocent victims, just as they have been on the definition of victim, have been let down again. It's an appalling indictment of government. Okay. I call Mrs Dolores Kelly. Thank you, um, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I share uh, the concerns over the failure uh, to put in place uh, the uh, structures uh, to allow victims' pensions uh, to be paid. Uh, these victims have campaigned long and hard for many, many years. Time after time, they have been disappointed. It is over three weeks now since I tabled a written question to the First and Deputy First Minister to ask for a progress report. And I would ask if it could be confirmed as to whether or not 
within the budget that there is a heading should money become available that money then can be paid over the, the coming months. Uh, I think it is also a bit more than just about the money. There were structures to be put in place and I would like to hear from the First and Deputy First Minister what progress has been made on those issues and what correspondence uh, have they had and meetings have they held with the Victims Commissioners and those who campa campaigned and those uh, to whom um, life uh, hasn't changed from the day and hour that they were injured, who continue to struggle uh, through the daily grind of life, uh, 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 suffering pain and trauma and loss. Mr. Paul Frew. Speaker, and this is a, a very worrying time for victims, victims who have suffered both throughout the troubles and even in this relative peaceful time. Because of their injuries, and in most cases, some cases, because of their loss. This pension, when it was announced, was a massive step forward for those innocent victims. And I would urge the Secretary of State to stand by the legislation that was passed in Westminster to fund this pension. It is terrible that those deserving people are being let down again. And I would urge the government to release the funding. The Northern Ireland Civil Service certainly should administer this, but surely this scheme should be funded from Westminster. It's where the legislation was passed, and of course, innocent victims go right across the United Kingdom and the, the British Isles. The pension criteria is for those who were injured through no fault of their own. And it was to be backdated until the 23rd of December 2014. This legislation was in place long before the new decade, new approach deal, and those victims suffering were suffered during the years of direct rule. There is no doubt in my mind that these pensions must be administered, that the victims who have lost and have been hurt deserve this. For all it is, let's face it, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker, let's face it, for all it is, it will never, ever recoup the loss that they have felt. But it is, it must be mentioned here today, that there is a party opposite that was the political wing of the IRA who caused so many of those victims. And to hear them speak in the media about and demanding that the British government pay, pay for their evil, pay for the cause and harm and pain that they dealt out to those innocent victims, it is quite galling. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. Call Mr. Jarek Kelly. Well, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm late. Apologies for not hearing uh, the beginning of this. Um, but but let, me, let me say that Sinn Fein's position uh, has been for a very, very, very long time that there are victims, and I agree with uh, Paul Free, and he's the only person I've heard, so forgive me for that. Uh, in that there are a wide range of, uh, of victims and uh, survivors' community um, right across the board. Uh, they deserve this payment. I also agree with them that this will not compensate for the suffering that they have gone through, not only in the deaths and, and in the injuries that were caused and caused to their families, and indeed their extended families into now another generation. But it is uh, some acknowledgement in what uh, they do deserve, an acknowledgement from society, that there was a conflict and that uh, people um, who were badly injured and still suffering over a long period of time, it's well past time where they got this pension. The pension has been agreed. Um, I disagree with uh, where the British government have brought it now in the same way as I disagree that they have not uh, moved the Storm House Agreement forward because we're dealing with the pension here but we're also dealing with a wide range of issue of uh, that community of victims and survivors uh, who have suffered uh, so much over uh, that long period of uh, time. Um, to try and defend it or redefine it, as they are, of course, trying to redefine um, the whole issue around the structures around legacy, um, is the uh, British government either trying to shy away from it, trying to be, um, if I could say, uh, bloody minded about it in terms of uh, where they're going uh, in this. But there is a legal definition. Uh, of a victim. It is in law. It's there from 2006. We've had the Solomon House Agreement from 2014. 
I and I'm, I'm presuming uh, every other party here and our party have been trying to get these structures set up and trying to get the uh, pension for victims uh, moved along from the beginning. The issue, and Paul Fru uh, pointed towards Sinn Féin, the issue around uh, the British uh, government um, now trying to, to redefine uh, what a victim is and trying to uh, decide who should and should not. Uh, when there was an issue, and there has been an issue around uh, a small number of people, uh, which I, I accept there is a, a deep difference of opinion in terms of uh, unionists and, uh, and certainly uh, Republicans. Um, but they, they have now tried to spread that out to involve hundreds, hundreds of people uh, that may not be uh, um, eligible. Um, for this uh, pension. Uh, the issue of money, which is the issue which has been in the headlines mostly in terms of this, uh, it is Westminster legislation. Um, the Assembly was not set up. Uh, there is an issue around the British Government and the fact that they, and it's been said by both the First and Deputy First Minister, that the uh, Assembly cannot, the Executive cannot afford. And it is said, I, I noticed that the amount around is, is 100 million. And I would uh, hesitate to think that 100 million would actually cover this. Mr. Kelly, I'm afraid members were limited to three minutes each. I beg your pardon. <laughs> well, I, I finish with that. I think the pension should go ahead, but it should go ahead on the basis that the British government need to pay for it because the, the executive can't afford it. Mr. Doug Beattie. Sure, and, and I, I've got to apologise for missing the start uh, of this matter of the day and, and missing most of the contributions, um, which I'm in no doubt. Um, uh, were extremely worthwhile. I mean, this has been a bad week for victims. Um, it's been a bad week um, for the Victims Payment Scheme. Uh, it's been a bad week for historical institutional abuse in the, the, the data breach. Uh, and victims are being re-victimised all over again. The issue of this pension scheme, and there's lots of arguments about who should and who, who should not get it, and I'll have a view and I'll give that view in a minute, but the big issue for me was that nobody took any action to get this set up. The lead department was supposed to be nominated on the 24th of February. It was not. The board to deliver this was supposed to be set up. It was not. And nobody was telling victims that this was not on track. And we were asking the NIO, and we were ex asking the executive office, and we were after the, asking VSS, and nobody knew where it stood. And it wasn't till about nine days before it was supposed to go live did somebody come out and say, it isn't happening. And that caused huge distress amongst the victims' community. Massive distress. And we still don't have a lead department, and we still don't have a date for when it's going to be set up. And that is truly disgraceful. We knew this was coming down the line. We can have arguments here, and we will have arguments, and I absolutely see where people will have a different point of view than I will have it as, uh, in regards to who should and who should not get it. I cannot ever stand up and say a perpetrator is entitled to this pension. I'm sure people will understand why I'm willing to say that, why I have to say that, why I'm always going to say that, that innocent victims always have to come first. But I'll accept other people will have different views. Let them have different views. Let them put their case across, but my view will not change. The issue about money is not a side issue, but it's not just the main issue, because the Executive Office did nothing in regards to this. Absolutely nothing. It's shameful. They need to take the blame for this. The issue of money is so unedifying. This is a UK-wide scheme. People and victims, innocent victims in Birmingham, in Manchester, in London, in Warrington are entitled to this payment in exactly the same way as people in Londonderry or in Belfast or in Armagh are entitled to that. So the UK government do have to put some money in. But we have a responsibility here also in our executive. So there has to be a, a, a conversation between our finance minister and the treasury because we have to pay our way. We have to put our share in, and that's what's not happening. There's no conversation, and that's a disgrace. Mr Chris Little. 
Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's been my privilege to work with victims of the Troubles, um, organisations such as the WAVE Injured Group and the Victims Forum during my time as Deputy Chairperson of the former OFM DFM Committee and participant on the Haas O'Sullivan Talks as long ago as 2013. The Alliance Party has consistently and actively campaigned for the delivery of a pension to provide a degree of financial support, independence and recognition for those seriously injured in the Troubles, and the extent to which victims themselves have had to fight for this modest assistance is wrong. All parties signed up to this approach in the new decade, uh, new approach agreement, and it is unacceptable that the pension has yet to be delivered. It must be recognised that the UK Government does have a responsibility to funding for this pension, given its commitments made during this agreement, and indeed that the Executive Office uh, to its delivery. Victims have been let down for far too long. Principal Deputy Speaker and Alliance will continue to, to do all we can to ensure prompt delivery of this pension scheme. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr Colin McGrath. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and of course we also support this because we want to see that finance and that funding making its way down to uh, victims as quickly as possible. They have waited far too long. Uh, they have been given too many uh, false hopes in the past, the most recent being uh, contained within the NDNA document. Uh, and we understand that there have been difficulties for the executive and what they have been dealing with. But from the committee perspective, from the executive office, we have continued to put that pressure on to see a resolution and delivery of the scheme. Uh, and we have also had a cross-party agreement that the bill should be at Westminster. Uh, the funding needs to come from there. It is quite a sizable amount of money um, that needs to be found. As has been referenced earlier, we have been given uh, a wide range as to how much this scheme could cost, uh, and it, it is a considerable amount of money. Um, and given the fact that the bill to deliver the scheme originated in Westminster, it is the view of the committee that that is where the finance should come. And also the fact that many of the victims are from beyond uh, the North, they are from uh, various places across the UK, Ireland and indeed the world, so uh, the funding maybe starting and originating from here may not be fair either, but we certainly want to see the delivery of this scheme as quickly as possible. Mr Mike Nesbitt. Uh, I am going to speak partly informed by my uh, experience as one of the commissioners for victims and survivors uh, when that commission was set up around early 2007. Uh, there were four of us and we had at times significantly different views on what we should do for the victims and survivors of our conflict, but a common theme was listening to victims and survivors. And one of their common themes was that on the day that they or their loved ones were injured, that there was an expectation that the state and the services of the state would form wagons in a circle around them and give them support. Did they need medical help? Well, we had a health service for them. Did they need their children transported to school? We could organise that. Did they need short-term cash flow issues addressed? We could do that. The common experience was that they were totally ignored. They were left to fend for themselves. And as the years became decades and the decades passed, the common experience was a feeling that we wanted them to simply grow old, fade away and die. And I think we can all agree in this chamber that is not what we want. I think of somebody like Jennifer McNairn, who in 1972 went for a drink one day in a Belfast city centre bar called the Abercorn. And she's been in a wheelchair ever since. And like thousands of victims and survivors, denied the opportunity to work for a living and save for a pension. The argument for providing that money is compelling. And I thought we had agreed it. So is the question really about who funds it, whether Treasury provides £100 million above and beyond the block grant, or whether we bring it? out of the executive's budget? 
Or is it about something else? Is it about who qualifies for the pension? And I accept we have a definition in the 2006 order. But we have done plenty for people who were injured by their own hands. If somebody hurt themselves with their own gun or their own bomb and they had to present at the A&E at the Royal Victoria Hospital, the NHS didn't say, how did you get injured? And if it was by your own hand, away you go. We have a compassionate, caring state and services. But this goes beyond that. This is about saying to people like Jennifer McNairn, we owe you and we must find a way to do it. Commissioner Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for bringing this up in the chamber today and for the opportunity to speak. I too share the concerns on the failures of this process being up and running as promised, which was supposed to launch at the end of May. This delay to the opening of the pensions payments application is yet again another harsh setback for the victims. The lack of clarity about who will fund the scheme is stalling the process again and, it for, for, and represents another setback for the very people who it is for. Never mind the inclusion of this in the new decade new approach document and agreements made, commitments given and as other, others have said, this is not new. This pension was agreed in 2014 and signed into legislation in January. And I would echo the calls of other colleagues in this chamber. We need answers from the executive ministers, from the first and deputy first minister, and I would urge them to attend this chamber to take our questions and actually give us some solid answers. What conversations have happened with Westminster? What of the Secretary of State? What conversations have happened with the various departments and ministers here for the structures to be set up? And why is there no clarification being given to anybody? There have been many saying for years that they would do all they can, that there is a determination to get this through. So let's see it. Let's see the determination in getting this sorted for the sake of victims. I would expect that a quick resolution on this matter is to be found with the Executive and the Treasury. Promises were made. It is absolutely time to deliver. Otherwise, our post-conflict political system is yet again failing to assist the very people who suffer and suffered greatly. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr Pat Catney. Thank you very much, Mr Principal, Deputy Speaker. Uh, probably I'm ashamed in a way to be here debating this, as we're trying to do here today. I mean, Again, I go back, folks, and I don't want to go on with you. I was very young when I had a small, a small public house in Donegal Key in Belfast, and every atrocity that happened within that bar, every customer that lost a mum, a dad, a loved one, or were hurt, or damaged, or injured, I seen that. And when I look back at it, I don't look back at dates, but I look back at the faces of those families. Uh, I was very lucky, I feel very privileged to grow up in Moira, but I worked in a little bar there in Moira called the Four Trees, and I remember among those early atrocities there was a Sergeant Brown, God rest him, that was murdered in, in Uri, and I found myself as a young man out walking behind that coffin, but so many more have I walked behind since then. Folks, I don't care where this comes from. We need to get a solution to this, and these victims need to be paid. No more crocodile tears, folks. No more playing politics with it. Just do the right thing. I have listened to uh, my colleague Mike, uh, that, that, that has stated that bomb in the Abercorn. Any one of my vintage, nobody could forget that. But there are all of these tragedies, whether it is a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, locking up a pub or a business or a shop late at night and found themselves assassinated simply because in their part time they chose to do something else or try as best they can in order to bring the community together. Folks, we're making great progress. This needs to be launched, this needs to be delivered and it needs to be delivered now. Thank you. Thank you. As no other member has indicated uh, or risen in their place and indicated that they wish to speak, we'll move on to the next item of business.